Hello, I'm so pleased you joined me again. This is a continuation of Peter Rabbit's Christmas Coming that consists of 25 chapters being the 25 days of Christmas and this being the 5th of December. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail were going to perform in the winter show as snowflakes. They were very good at twirling. They would also be singing. They had practiced their song in the burrow so often that Peter knew every word of it too. On the afternoon of the show, the sisters were very excited. Flopsy had twirled into the Christmas tree twice already, and Mopsy kept drinking cups of hot blackberry juice because she was worried about losing her voice. Are you looking forward to watching us, Peter? asked Cottontail, leaping in front of him and doing a pirouette. I'm looking forward to you. Stop practising, Peter replied, rather grumpily. Now, now, Peter, said their mother. I'm very much looking forward to it. My dear, she added, she had made the sisters snowflake costumes and they looked very sweet in them. Peter and Benjamin were coming to watch the girls perform. They were both, they would both have preferred to watch real snowflakes twirling through the air, but unfortunately there were no sign of snow. The show was to be held on a little stage of logs in the clearing. Everyone had gathered to watch, even old Mr. Brown the Owl, who had woken up early, especially. First, the ducklings danced about dressed as stars, and only one duckling fell off the stage, which was a huge success. Jemima Puddle Duck clapped and honked very loudly indeed. Next, the frog chorus sang a song about holly berries. Peter really enjoyed it, although it made him feel quite hungry. He and Benjamin had found some spring onions on the refreshment table as they arrived and kept taking a quick nibble from their pockets whenever Mrs Rabbit wasn't looking. Peter and Benjamin could have been part of the show too, of course, but when Mrs Tittlemouse, the organiser, had asked them what they'd like to do, however, they couldn't think of anything. But then but that had been weeks ago. Now, they each secretly rather wished they were up on the stage and receiving rapturous applauses. At last, it was time for the snowflakes, but now the sun was sinking and the sky was streaked with pink and gold. The music began again and the snowflakes started twirling, slowly and gracefully at first, then faster and faster. It looked very beautiful. The rabbit's ears stuck out as they spun. Everyone clapped and cheered. Bravo, shouted Peter, well done. The snowflakes beamed with pleasure then hopped off the stage. Is that the end? Benjamin whispered. I finished my onions. There's one more song, Peter said. Let's get closer to the refreshments. There'll be a rush after this. As all of the performances came back on to the stage, the music struck up once more. Everyone was soon singing it along, and Peter and Benjamin danced as well. They twirled like snowflakes. They scampered like reindeers. They even flapped their arms like robins. Unfortunately, they flapped their arms right next to the jugs of blackberry juice. Oh, said Peter, coming to a sudden soggy halt. Oh, said Benjamin, blinking juice out of his eyes. Now blackberry juice is one of the stickiest juices ever. There is. Even after Mrs Rabbit had scrubbed their fur with her handkerchief, they were still very sticky. Peter, she said, first the sore paw and the glue, then the sore arm and the post box, and now this. All of my handkerchiefs have been ruined. If you wanted to dance, you should have done it on stage. Next year I will, Peter said sadly. Next year I will. Chapter 6, December the 6th. Mrs Rabbit, said Peter and his sisters, must write their Christmas cards. Peter had written his, one to Benjamin and one to his Scottish cousin, Finley. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail were still making theirs. They were doing a different drawing for each card and writing a personal message inside for every animal who had been in the winter show. It was taking a while. Peter was bored. Hurry up, I want to go and deliver them, he said. Oh, Peter, that reminds me, said his mother. I promised Mrs Tiggledy Winkle that you would help to deliver her Christmas cards this year. She's so busy washing the show costumes that she doesn't have time. Peter crossed his arms and sighed. Do I have to, he said. His mother looked at him sternly. Yes, Peter, you do. She's washing all the blackberry juice out of your jacket. You need to return the favour. So a short while later, Peter headed out of the burrow towards the hill where Mrs Tiddywinkle lived. When he arrived at Mrs Tiddywinkle's little brown door in the hill, there was a steam coming out from underneath it. He knocked, waited, and then pushed the door open. The whole house was extremely hot and full of steam. Mrs Tiddywinkle stood amid piles of laundry, ironing in a very familiar blue jacket. That's mine, said Peter. Oh, hello, Peter, Mrs Tiddywinkle said. Yes, here you go. I've got all the juice stains out of it. It's come up lovely. Peter put the jacket on. It was warm and cosy. Thank you, Mrs Tiddywinkle, he said. I'm sorry I got juice on it. The hedgehog laughed. It was a challenge, my dear, but all's well that ends well. Can I help you with anything else? Peter remembered why he was there. My mother said you needed help delivering your Christmas cards. Oh, yes, dear. 
That would be splendid. Let me just find them for you. Mrs. Tiddywinkle moved various piles of clothes this way and that. Eventually, she discovered the cards on the table under a tea cosy. I've written the names on the envelopes. Peter took the cards, ducked under some drying handkerchiefs and went back out into the cold. I saw soon warm up delivering these cards, he thought. The first few were easy. Mr. Alderman Fatomi taught us and Mr. Jeremy Fisher was down at the pond. Squirrel Nutkin and his brother Twinkleberry were in the tree. Peter was on his way to Benjamin's house with a car for Benjamin's father. Mr. Bunny, when he spotted his cousin coming towards him. Hi, Peter. What are you doing? Benjamin called. Delivering cars for Mrs. Tiddywinkle, Peter replied. Here's one to you from me, and this one's for your father. Thanks, said Benjamin. Who do you have left? Peter looked at the last few cards in his bag. Only the folk at the farm. Our help sent up Benjamin. Just then Peter's sisters bounded up the path. We're delivering our cards too, said Flopsy importantly. She led them towards the farm, down the path to the stream, then along the hedge that borrowed sorry, that bordered Mr McGregor's garden. I'll just pop into the garden. It's quicker to go that way. Peter said quietly and squeezed under the hedge. Benjamin stopped. Peter, he hissed. The sisters bounded on. Peter hissed the hedge in Benjamin's voice. Come back. Peter ignored him as he happily sniffed and snuffled his way along the rows of vegetables. Suddenly he heard a terrible noise. A grumbling sound was coming along the path. Mr McGregor. Horrified, Peter scampered away as fast as he could. He didn't notice when the last few cards flew out of his pocket. He squeezed back under the hedge, meeting Benjamin head on, and they both hurried into the woods. Only once there were several trees deep in the wood did they begin to relax. Then Peter touched his pocket. Oh no, I've lost the cards. And so it was a very sad little rabbit who went home. His ears drooping to confess that he mislaid Mrs. Tiddywinkle's final cards. His mother made Peter rewrite them for Mrs. Tiddywinkle, then sent him out again to deliver them. To show he was very sorry, Peter added a few drawings of his own, and when the farm animals opened them, they were charmed. The chickens even pinned theirs up on the barn wall. Seventh of December. It was raining, so Peter's mother decided to bake mince pies today. Peter and his sisters were helping. Benjamin had come round to help too. Mrs. Rabbit didn't know what to do with so many helpers. Benjamin, can you pass me the rolling pin, please? She asked her a she asked, her apron covered in flour. The little rabbits were all huddled together round the table. Their noses sniff, sniff, sniffing. Flopsy, stop elbowing me, said Pop Mopsy. I'm not, protested Flopsy. It is my turn yet. Is it my turn yet, said Cottontail, balancing up and down. In a minute, said Mrs. Rabbit, patiently. Now where has my pastry gone? Peter looked guilty. Peter, she said. Have you had your paws on my pastry? No, he said. I've just moved the bowl closer to me and smelled it. We'll never get them cooked at this rate, said Mrs. Rabbit. Peter looked, loved baking. The smells, the way flour got everywhere, the taste when it came out of the oven. There was nothing better, and mince pies were very festive. It might not be snowing, but his home and warm, his home was very warm and cosy and Christmassy. He sighed with happiness. It was his job to stir the mince meat while the others got the pastry cases ready. He put his nose in the mince meat bowl too. His favourite ingredients were the cinnamon and nutmeg. Or maybe the almonds and raisins, or the orange peel. He couldn't decide. It was all too delicious. His nose twitched. Someone's else, someone else's nose was twitching next to his. Can I help you stir? Benjamin asked, his head close to Peter's. Flopsy and Mopsy and Cottontail were carefully pressing out circles of pastry and placing them into the baking tray. Mrs. Rabbit was cutting out pastry holly leaves to put on the top of the pies for decoration. Let's make a wish while we stir, said Peter. Benjamin squeaked with joy. My turn first, he said. Unfortunately, Benjamin's stirring was rather vigorous and a lot of the mixture ended up on the table. Oops, he said, quickly picking it up and popping it into his mouth. Mmm. Peter looked at him sternly. Then it was Peter's turn to stir. It was harder than he thought. Somehow, even more mixture flew onto the table. It didn't stay there for long, though. Mmm, said Peter, licking his whiskers. My turn again, said Benjamin, trying to take the spoon from Peter. No, I want to do it, Peter said, holding on tightly. They pushed and pulled for a few seconds and then, oh no, the bowl tipped over and almost all the mincemeat was on the table. What's going on? asked Mrs. Rabbit, looking up. But the two rabbits had already removed the evidence from the table. Pass the mincemeat over, please, Peter. It's time to fill the cases, his mother said. Gingerly, Peter passed her the bowl. It's almost empty, she gasped. What's happened to all the mincemeat? Peter and Benjamin both looked rather guilty. It fell on the table, Peter said, it's trying to explain. We didn't think it should go in the pies. That doesn't mean it should go in your tummies instead, laughed his mother. 
She got out the ingredients again and made Peter and Benjamin measure them out. They weren't allowed to have a taste at all, not even a raisin. Once the mixture had been stirred by Mrs. Rabbit, this time Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail spooned it into the pastry cases and their mother put the tray in the oven. While they waited for the pies to come out of the oven, they all helped wash up. My tummy feels a bit sore, whispered Benjamin. So does mine, said Peter. It was only when Peter and Benjamin didn't want to eat their lunch that Mrs. Rabbit realised they weren't feeling well. Benjamin, run home, dear, and have some peppermint tea, then off to bed with you. That will make you feel better, she said gently. After his peppermint tea, Peter crawled into his bed. He didn't even want any freshly baked mince pies. Next time he would wait until they were cooked. Chapter 8, December the 8th. The next morning, Peter was still in bed with a sore tummy when he heard lots of excited squeaking from his sisters. He rolled over and put the pillow over his head. A few seconds later, it was whisked away and three faces were centimetres away from his. It's snowing, shrieked Flopsy. It's so beautiful, said Mopsy with a sigh. Will you come out and play with us? asked Cottontail. Peter was already throwing back his blankets and putting on his shoes. Peter, I really don't think you should, said his mother, but it was too late. He'd already shrugged on his coat and was out of the door. The snow was only just beginning to settle on the ground, but oh, the wood looked different already. Magical and thrilling in its carpet of white, Peter laughed and stuck out his tongue to catch snowflakes. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail were holding paws and dancing round in a circle, singing their snowflake song. Peter called a happy voice. It was Benjamin running over to him. He had also forgotten about his sore tummy. Isn't it perfect? It is, Peter agreed. Let's go and see if the pond is icing over yet. All five bunnies bounded through the wood. The snow was falling faster now and they couldn't see very far ahead. Not many animals were out and about. Exciting as the snow was, it was getting more and more difficult to move in it. Cottontail kept falling behind. Finally, they got to the pond. It looked grey and cold, but the ice wasn't strong enough to skate on. Soon we'll be able to ice skate, Peter said excitedly. Just then they heard a quack. It was Jemima Puddle Duck and her four ducklings. The little ones huddled under her wing, looking mournfully at the pond. Hello, Jemima, said the rabbits politely. Hello, everyone, said Jemima. She drew her brood closer to her and sighed. Oh, goodness, what are we to do? What do you mean, asked Cottontail. Well, we're rather stuck. My ducklings can't swim back across the pond to the farm because of the ice, and they can't fly that far yet either. I don't know where we're going to shelter tonight. Peter had been looking forward to ice skating, but he could see that the ice wasn't fun for the ducklings. He noticed that they were shivering. We'll help you build a shelter on the side of the pond, he offered. The other rabbits nodded. Quick, everyone, let's pick up some branches and sticks before they get covered in snow, he said. All the friends began to scurry around, looking for sticks, while Peter talked to Jemima. How about if we built something on this side of the tree, he suggested, then you'll be sheltered from the wind. Oh, yes, that sounds very sensible, Jemima said. Thank you, Peter. When they had gathered as much brushwood as they could find, they started building a sort of nest with a roof for the ducks. It took a long time. They were away so long, in fact, that Mrs. Rabbit came looking for her children, and Mr. Bunny came searching for Benjamin. But when they saw what their little bunnies were doing, they joined in too, and by sundown the ducks had a cosy nest surrounded by snow. We can't keep the snow from falling on it, said Peter, but I think you'll be comfy while it's very cold. Thank you so much, said Jemima, wrapping her wings around the rabbits for a hug. You're very kind, all of you. Thank you, thank you, peeped the ducklings. <laughs> the little rabbits were pleased. What a day! They helped their friends, and now the whole world had turned white. Peter longed to go ice skating, but he was so tired he could hardly walk home. He knew it would all be waiting for him tomorrow, clean and white and ready for his paw prints. <laughs> Chapter 9, the night for December. All the rabbits were up early the next morning, searching for their ice skates. Mrs. Rabbit hadn't even had her first cup of lavender tea before she had been asked 20 times where the skates were. Eventually, she went to a wooden chest next to her bed and pulled out four pairs of soft mittens and four scarves. If you're going skating, you must wear these, she said, winding a long scarf around Flopsy. You should have been wearing them yesterday as well, really, out all day in the snow. But we were helping the ducks, Peter pointed out. I know, and I'm very proud of you, his mother said, smiling. Ah, look, here are the skates, right at the bottom. Peter couldn't wait to get to the ice. The rabbit scampered down to the pond, taking longer than usual because of the huge drifts of snow. 
Everyone is here, exclaimed Mopsy when they got to the frozen water and it really did seem as though all the woodland creatures had come to play on the ice. There were frogs twirling in the centre of the pond, hedgehogs shuffling around the edges and squirrels skidding along the ice, laughing. Peter was eager to join them. There has been more snow in the night and the trees at the edge of the pond were weighed down by it. Peter stepped onto the ice very carefully, holding onto the branch of a tree for balance. Hello, Peter, said a tiny voice behind him, making him jump. Luckily, he didn't fall. Hello, said another voice. And another. He looked around to see Jemima's ducklings all standing on the ice. Oh, hello, he said. Have you been skating already? Oh, yes, said the ducklings. We woke up very early because we were in a strange nest. Mother said we could try skating. We'd really go we're really good now. So good that Mother said we can skate home. The four little ducks used their webbed feet to glide across the surface of the icy pond. They looked very elegant as they made a wide circle. They crossed the paths of Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who had quickly got used to their skates and were twirling round and round. Peter straightened up and let go of the branch. Glide, he said to himself from the corner of his eye. He saw Flopsy still sail past. A leg in the air, he pushed off with his left leg and slid across the ice on his right. He grinned. Now he had to do the same, but on the other leg. Push and glide, push and glide. He had his tongue out, concentrating, and his arms looked like wings as he used them for balance. He was getting the hang of it now. Unfortunately, Peter was so busy looking at his feet that when he saw Benjamin sliding towards him, it was too late to change course. The two rabbits smacked into each other and fell on the ice with a bump. Benjamin, said Peter crossly. He had a sore bottom. Why didn't you look where you were going? Why didn't you look where you were going? replied Benjamin. Cottontail skidded to a stop beside them. Do you two need help? she asked kindly. No, thank you, they chorused, slowly getting to their feet and trying not to wobble. They looked at each other and started to laugh. Come on, let's do it together, said Peter. They linked arms and set off, muttering. Push and glide, push and glide. Soon they were whizzing around without thinking about it. Everyone on the ice was grinning and laughing, even Mr Todd, who had joined them. No one was scared, though, because the fox was too busy showing off to catch anyone. He was jumping and spinning and skating backwards. Peter and Benjamin had to admit he looked very elegant in his smart suit and scarf. The rabbit stayed on the ice until sundown as they were early, as they wearily drudged home f through the snow. Peter decided ice skating was one of the best things about winter. He hoped the pond would stay iced over for weeks. Tenth of December, chapter ten. After another morning of ice skating, Peter and his sisters were heading home. They promised their mother that they would go coursing in that evening just after sunset and she didn't want them to be too tired. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail were skipping along, already singing. We'll be doing enough singing later on, Peter grumbled, but they ignored him. They loved singing. At home, the rabbits played a game of skittles inside before having an early supper. Peter didn't mind that at all. He did mind his mother fussing about his scarf, though. It always tickled his nose, the way she tied it. Stop wriggling about, Peter, she said. You need to be warm. At that moment, they heard a voice. Hello, someone called. It was Mr Bunny and Benjamin. To Peter's relief, the visitors distracted Mrs Rabbit and she left the scarf alone. Oh, hello, Bouncer, she said. Do come in. We're nearly ready. Mr Bunny and Benjamin came into the burrow holding their sheets of music. Peter was pleased to see that Benjamin was bundled up similarly to him. It's hot in here, Benjamin muttered. Peter grinned at him. Does everyone have their music? asked Mrs Rabbit. Good, let's go then. The rabbits made their way to the clearing where the choir was meeting. The frogs were already there and the mice. There were so many singers that Peter was afraid there would be no one left to listen to them. Mr Jeremy Fisher was in charge. We will be setting off very soon, he announced. Does everyone have a lantern? Mrs Rabbit had agreed that Peter and Benjamin could have a lantern between them, but she wanted the young rabbits to share hers. A kindly squirrel handed one to Peter. It had a long stick handle and a glowworm inside. As the sun was now setting, the glowworms were lighting up. Oh, said Flopsy and Mopsy gazed around. It's so beautiful. The clearing did look rather magical with all the lanterns glowing softly and then the choir was ready to set off. Their first stop was Jemima Puddle Duck shouting near the frozen pond. The fluffy ducklings clustered in the doorway as the woodland creatures sang a medley of wintry songs. There was one about holly, one about snowmen and one about skating, but Peter's favourite was about a beautiful shining star. Thank you very much, said Jemima, clapping her wings. That was delightful. Onwards, cried Mrs. Jeremy, Mr. Mr. Jeremy Fisher, waving the choir forward. Next, they visited Squirrel Nutkin and the other squirrel families. They all listened from their nests high up in the trees. Peter's neck was a bit stiff after that because he had been looking up at them while he sang. After that, 
They stopped at Mrs. Tiddywinkle's house for some hot blackberry juice to warm them up, and then it was on to Mrs. Tiddlemouse's tidy home. The final stop was the farm. All the farm animals had stayed up eagerly awaiting the carol singers. My throat is getting sore, Benjamin whispered to Peter. So's mine, Peter whispered back. The farm animals had gathered in the barn, and there was a platform of hay bales for the carol singers to stand on. It was cosy and warm, with everyone huddled together in the glow of the lanterns. Peter breathed in deeply. He loved the smell of hay. They sang about family and love, and they sang about gift giving. The donkeys and goats tapped their hooves in time to the beat. A mother pig had tears in her eyes. As the final notes of the last song died away, Flopsy nudged Peter. It really feels like Christmas is coming now, doesn't it? She whispered. Peter nodded and grinned at her. It certainly did. Christmas is getting closer. Sing this festive song to make you feel all Christmassy. Would you like to sing this song with me? Okay, you can join in. It's called We Wish You a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding, oh, bring us some figgy pudding, oh, bring us some figgy pudding and a cup of good cheer. We won't go until we get some, we won't go until we get some, we won't go until we get some, so bring it out here. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Thank you so much. I hope you do join me for the next chapter, which will be chapter 11 on the 11th of December. See you soon. Bye.